Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. It's time to join the conversation. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Headed, episode number 123. With me, as always, is uh, Troy, Trussell, and Chet. <laughs> Three shots. Chet, uh, you, had to, you had to think yeah or like troy uh, well i knew his last name <laughs> i knew troy but i'm looking at you and i'm trying to come up with a name for you in those glasses but uh hey whatever. back off man you, you know you don't look you look at these glasses and you feel defeated i don't because you're thinking man if he could see well there's no way i'm gonna get close to him in a shooting competition well if that's the case i'll just use my eyes as the excuse of why i couldn't shoot i mean like you did so Anyway, today we have uh, what's on Chet's mind. We've got the top three uh, vehicles that we've owned, and Troy's going to finish it out with a good word. So, Chet, dare I ask, what is on your mind? <laughs> it kind of goes right along li- lines with our top three. And uh, all, all of our, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, growing up, I wanted, I wanted to get a car. Like I wanted to have a vehicle. Like that's, that's like a step yeah. in the process. And, and how it was in my household is that, that I could, that wasn't provided for me. I could go buy whatever I wanted whenever I was able. And I was a sophomore in college before I had enough money to go out and buy my own truck. So I did, I was excited about it, saved up money, you know, did all that stuff. And then, you know, there I am starting my sophomore year uh, replacing alternators in dorm room parking lots, starters, oil changes, you name it. Without YouTube. No, it was, uh, this was, uh, this was pre internet, Troy. Right. <laughs> the internet existed <laughs> at the military level. It just, no, it wasn't there enough. Was, there was some internet going on. Anyway, so, but yeah, it wasn't, there wasn't information like that on it that I knew of yet. So it was buying the uh, Chilton. Manuals, manuals yep. uh, for for the vehicles that I owned, and you know I'd call my dad and uh, like I need some help. You know he's like, well you have the book, and yeah yeah blah blah blah. And, and at one point um, we both had the book, so he could tell me what page to go to, and it was very helpful. Uh, I find it uh, one of the things that I think changed with generations as well. Like that, I live two hours away. I grew up two hours away from where I was going to college, and that just wasn't in the cards for my dad to drive two hours to fix your truck, get my truck up uh, back on the, on the road. And I'm okay with that. Uh, totally. But today it seems like that's, that's a lot different. It's like, Oh, I I need to go do, I need to go help. I need to go whatever. Anyway. Um, I learned a lot through fixing all the crap that, that, that I had bought over the years. And then, um, you know, I was like, I, I don't like vehicle maintenance. And I remember saying out loud at some point, I want to get to a position in my life where I don't have to pay. I, I could pay somebody to do all this work. I don't want to do it on my own. Like that was a probably the highest stat. You know, it's like, hey, I want to be able to go out and eat whenever I want or I want to live in the house that I want to live in. And then if I could ever be wealthy enough, I want to be wealthy enough to be able to pay people to fix my cars. Well, then, you know, I guess I'm there, but at the same time, I'm not giving people money to do stuff that I could do myself to a certain extent, or I'm not going to give a dealership $500 for something that would cost me two hours and 90 cents in a thermal resistor, you know, solder job. And I've, you know, you get married, you have two cars and there's twice as much stuff to do. Well, now I have graduated into four vehicles. I now have a fleet and I'm sick of it. I'm tired of working on cars, but I'm still not going to pay for all this stuff. And I don't, I don't mind doing stuff that I know how to do. Like oil changes are fine, brake pads, you know, rotors. The, the simple side, replace a starter, not a big deal. You know, spark plugs, not a big deal. But now I'm running into some issues with uh, my daughter drives a, a Beetle. And I hate German cars because <laughs> there's some really dumb stuff with with that that makes it extremely difficult for anybody that's in it, it, it just makes it impossible. And then I uh, ran into an issue um, earlier this week, Easter Sunday, sending my son back to school, noticed a little bit of a noise that's not normal. 
kind of a scraping sound. And I'm like, well, hopefully that's just a rock in the uh, little guard that protects your rotor, you know? So pull the tire off, get in there. It's not that. There's something that's more substantially wrong, which I don't know what it is, but I have to take it to a mechanic. And apparently a mechanic is as high demand as a dentist or a doctor today. You want to you hear the quotes? Called on Monday. I'm in a desperate situation. You, okay, you tell your story, and then I'll tell you mine. Well, what do you think? What, how many days do you think they're given? To, for, to get your quote back? No, just, just to get it in the shop for them to look at it. Uh, probably two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, was two weeks was the first one. Yeah. And I'm like, what? That's not working. That's not going to work for me. Like, we're going to have to, we're going to have to fix that. And so then I call around and I finally got, um, the, it was two days, get it in. And then we'll look at it the next morning. If you can get here that night before. So anyway, at the time of this recording, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know whatever. We need to get it back on the road because it's a pain in the neck. So I am tired of working on vehicles. <laughs> I just started working on a vehicle, working on a vehicle or paying someone to work on a vehicle, working on a vehicle. Uh, what are you doing? I'm trying to get my, uh, 1964 Lincoln continental running. Yeah. So what's why, why isn't it running? Well, it ran, but then it was blowing white smoke. So I'm trying to figure out why it was blowing white smoke. And there are many different reasons because it did sit for about 20, 25 years uh, before maybe even longer before I picked it up, but it fired up. Yeah. It turns over and when it ran, it sound it didn't sound bad, you know, it just it sounded like a running car, but there was some smoke. And so I don't know if that was a product of old fuel, the oil that has been sitting in there. Cause I just kind of turned it on and just let it, you know, kind of crank over a little bit, see if it would even crank. But, uh, you're, you're talking about the, uh, the German cars and how they're, they're a nightmare. So that 1964 Lincoln, it's a Ford mm -hmm. vehicle. Everything on that car, bolt-wise, is basically a half an inch. All of them. Yeah. And the only, the, the one that I found that's not so far is the drain plug for the oil, which I have not gotten off yet. And I don't know if you can see. Oh, it got a little scraped up there, man. <laughs> but you got in a fight with your car? Yeah, so that's me underneath <laughs> trying to... Uh, get the uh, get the drain plug off and then it's at an angle like this so every time you kind of put a little bit of, of force to it it slips off and yeah i don't have the car on a lift i've just got it you know kind of jacked up a little bit and then the uh whatever the uh you put some jack stands under jack there to protect thank you jack stands yeah. and uh but in the uh in the storage unit that i have it it was an old restaurant so it had a concrete floor, but it had walls and the walls were cinder block walls. And so what they did was they just kind of knocked the cinder block walls over, but it's real rough. And that's just right where that drain plug sits over the top of that rough stuff. And so every time my hand would slip off and bam, and I'd slam it on the ground. And that's how I got that. But I still haven't gotten it off yet. But so I've been, I've been working on that, but you talk about how uh, people that rebuild, you know, do mechanic work and yeah. engine work and stuff like that are kind of in high demand. So I, I found this company that rebuilds those four thirties and, um, the quote to rebuild and, and put some, you know, new parts in it, pistons and cylinder, you know, yeah. um, replace whatever needs to be replaced, but they call it a stage two because they don't do stage one anymore. I got the email on that and they're like, we don't, we haven't done stage one. And what is stage one? I don't years. even know what you're talking about. Just varying levels of how much you want your engine to oh, perform. Like, yeah. like DEF CON. Yeah. So, well, it's like, uh, I want it to be like it was, or I want to soup it. Yeah. Up. So stage one would basically be just a stock rebuild yeah. and stage two, they add some heavier duty parts to it. Guess how much a stage two rebuild. I look smarter when I take my glasses off. I'm more serious. Uh, you look dumb either way. <laughs> okay. How much do they want? Take take a just take a wild guess how much they want. A nineteen sixty four seven liter V eight. Four grand. Just to rebuild it? So yeah, just to well I have no clue. I'm let's just call, let's four call grand. let's so their rebuild, which they haven't done in twelve thousand dollars. Since twenty eighteen, their stage one rebuild was fifty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Stage two, which is all they offer now, was thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> I won. No. I got closest, and that, and I didn't go over. That does not include. What does he me. win for us? 
<laughs> taking the <laughs> engine a new TV. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Shipping I was in the showcase. The I was in the showcase. I should have won the new car. So you get a Lincoln Continental. <laughs> there you, you fix go. The engine. And so a that, trip to Vegas. That is just the cost when it shows up at their door. Yeah, that's so not the, me shipping it up there. That's you're paying not me somebody it to out. take it out, crate it, ship it up, ship it back, put it back in. Now, do you want? Uh, are you are you wanting to go? No thanks. Uh-uh. <laughs> a brand new engine, just or do you want to go with the original? Well, I want to keep the original just because I, I think in the long run it just adds to the. Have you looked and see how much one of these cars would cost? Used car, same car. Yeah, they're way up there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that would be completely redone. But I looked at doing like an LS swap on it. What car is it again? Sixty four Lincoln Continental. But uh, yeah, I looked at doing an LS swap in it, and then everything that you got to replace, the cost of the motor, everything like that. I mean, it just by the time you're done, I was like, I just want to get this thing running. Yeah. And I think I was like, well, I'll just find a local machine shop or something like that to fix this up and it won't be anywhere near that can you uh here's a convertible no no can you you could find somebody around here that doesn't mind doing that though right yeah i think so yeah but i want to try to do it myself first and you're talking about the manuals so i had a blazer um as one of my i don't know my maybe my second or third car but that was like when i was on my own, on my own. And, and yeah. so I bought the Chilton manual for that and, and repaired some stuff based off of that, you know, but it was just, some of that stuff was pretty confusing to me. Yeah. I've got the original manual that came with that car that came with the car, not like a manual that you shows you how to rebuild. You it went and, and that, bought. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's everything laid out. And I was like, this is so much more simple to read. Yeah. than that Chilton manual was, I was like, I could, So I ordered another copy of it that's new, Mm -hmm. you know, so I can put the other one back as not such with your greasy, bloody forearm. Yeah. So, well, uh, I think the big difference between what you're going through and what I'm going through, computers. if you have yours tore that torn apart, you still go to work the next day. Well, yeah. Your kids still (laughs) go to school. Yeah. Yeah. I'm dealing with get this thing back on the road so I could go back to my normal life. And I know I sound like a wimp, for complaining that one of my four vehicles, but I've got two teenagers, one of them in a different town. Work, they got their own work schedules. My wife has work schedules where she drives for that. I mean, not just to an office, mm-hmm. but it's, it's a disaster. Yeah. It's no like, and I had, you were talking about vehicle issues and I was like, perfect because yeah. I had one this morning. And so my, my truck, for whatever reason, you know what that can be like a easy, um, easy in out, do you have that on your Ford? No, the where the running boards drop down? No, no, no. Well, if I had drop down, I don't like those. Yeah, uh, I don't either. So I don't have them. But no, so my steering wheel. Oh, your seat goes down and your steering wheel yeah, goes up. Yeah, seat comes back, steering wheel goes up. So, yeah. you, you know, you can get in and out real easy. My wife's car has that. I don't like it. Which for me, I love it because mm-hmm. with the prosthetics, the way I drive and the way I have to get in and out, out mm-hmm. are not the same. So I hop in this morning. Works as normal. I went to stop by to to grab my uh, my stuff to be prepared for, for recording. For recording, and Shocker. Uh, <laughs> I went to get back in my truck and started, and the seat stayed where it was, and the the uh, steering wheel didn't move. And I'm like, so I turned it off, and I was like, that's kind of weird. So I tried to start nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, so you I, have a memory button? Did you push that? I pushed that. It didn't work. The st- the button on the steering column so I could lower the steering wheel didn't work. So I drove to work <laughs> here. I could get my seat. So I jacked my seat all the way up and I was like, geez, Louise. Yeah. And so then I got to work and what did you listen to? Did you listen to the chronic all the way? No, I didn't have any beats. With the, with the steering no, wheel I was, I was more, I was more mad because I was like, I spent so much money on the four on the Lincoln this weekend. Yeah. And I was like, here we go. And now I've got this issue. I'm gonna have to go pay to get this fixed. Cause yeah. I don't mess with the computer. I don't do computers. I mean, right. I've seen a few selling for you- 38,000. I mean, if you're going to spend that much on a rebuild, just buy a new one. No, this is a special one. It's been owned by important people. Um, Charlie Daniels rode in it when he came to town, one owner car. And is it completely redone for 38? Yeah. I mean, there are auctions, though, so you got to win it. That's a good-looking car. Yeah. 
Anyway, um, warranty? No, I got over 115,000 miles. If I did, you uh, did you get online and do some research? Recalls and all that. No, not just that. But like somebody could be like, oh, if you uh, hold the power button down while you turn your left signal on, it'll reset everything well, or whatever those. Things fortunately, are. I didn't have to. I got to I got to work and turned it off, and then it worked. Oh. For whatever reason, like it went back to normal yeah. all of a sudden. So I don't know what if there was a glitch in the matrix because then when I got it's going to happen again. Well, it, it probably will, but it was it was weird because when I tried to call somebody, um, I was calling my accountants because you know we're coming up on tax, tax, the tax man, and uh, you know they're like, hey, we need all your stuff, you know, or do we need to file an extension and blah blah. And I'm like, hey, I can't really hear you guys too well. And they're like, we can't hear you. You sound like you're in a tunnel. And I was like, that's weird. And the phone just cut off. And I'm like, something going yeah. on. And then, then I get to work and the computers are messing up. It was just a really funny morning for electronics. Yeah. Maybe you uh, you got something going on inside of you. That or maybe China. Yeah. It could maybe be. China did something and they're messing with my truck because it's still connected to the internet. You're the least of China's worries right now. <laughs> <laughs> the least, I tell you. Oh, man. So, Troy, I, all I have advice for you is... I know you were raised in a household that got you vehicles as a as a driver. Yeah. Don't don't carry that on. Just I, I'm not. Just say, hey, kids, when you're old enough to buy your own car, you have enough money to buy it, you go right ahead. But that's right. I'm not gonna equip you with all these vehicles. Well, our plan is kind of the Dave Ramsey philosophy is like, hey, you can work for your car and we'll pay however much you earn. Yeah. To save up for your first car, we'll pay half. Yeah. So if they save up two grand, we'll pitch in two grand and they can get a car. But they got to have some kind of take, some but, kind of investment but, in it. But with that plan, are you or are you not adopting the maintenance of that vehicle? Yeah. See, see, you got to go ahead and put that in the writing now yeah. while your kids are young. Yeah. We'll, so we'll their sign, expectations we'll sign a contract. are set. Yeah. We'll sign a contract. Yeah. yeah. The thing you do, you're a, it's for you on oil changes. It's for, you know, and if, uh, you get this little rattle thing going on. Like, oh yeah. gosh. Man, yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I could tell Easter when that rattle started happening. It started rattling you. It did. <laughs> A little bit. Stuff. So anyway, <laughs> if you sucks. ever want to just uh, kind of get away and and uh, you know, just have fun maintenance on a car, come on over. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I, I will be able to break that uh <laughs> your uh plug off, and get that oil out of there. So I stole, not really, uh, a pylon for a prosthetic leg to use as kind of a, a cheater cheater bar. bar. Yeah. Have y'all ever seen one of those rotisseries for a vehicle? Like to start it? No, it's like a rotisserie. So well, I've seen it when they're straightening frames that they put that. Yeah. In, yeah. A friend of mine is put, I, I, is rebuilding a, a nineteen, I think sixty seven Ford Mustang. Yeah. And he's got just the. Like all the guts are out of it. It's just, just the a frame. shell, right? Yeah. The frame. And he borrowed it actually from another friend of mine who owns a ICS Collision. Mm -hmm. And they restore ve vehicles and stuff. And he borrowed a rotisserie for him. A frame straightener? He calls it a rotisserie because you literally. Has can, it got some chickens on it? You can literally. Get it from Sam's Club? It's like a chicken. It's like a, the frame of a car is in a chicken rotisserie and it, you can just spin it. It's pretty sweet. Okay. I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I think it's just for the frame. I don't I don't know that you put the whole car on that. No, you wouldn't put the whole I don't yeah, think you uh, could hold it. The there's a Saturday car. Night Live skit um, where they're making fun of uh, who's the Lamello, uh, Limoncello. What are their, what are the, the uh, there's this, you know what I'm talking about? The baller guy. He's their dad. Yeah, I don't anyway, know. he calls it rotisserie chicken in, in the Saturday Night Live skits. Anybody, anytime anybody says rotisserie, I say it's a rotisserie. 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 I got that from my brother-in-law, Joel. He sent that to me. Good stuff. It's hilarious. So that's what's been on my mind. I'm tired of owning vehicles. Uh, I feel you. And I also don't like paying for vehicles. Which well, is if it makes you feel any better, you don't. Need work. Speaking of taxis, and if it makes you feel any better, you don't actually own the vehicle. You rent it. From the government. So. From Kansas, because you yeah. have to pay taxes on it every year. Or they'll repo it. Yes. Don't even get me started on that. That's a different what's on my mind. Yeah. All right. 
All right, we'll take a quick break and we come back. Top three vehicles that we've owned. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Are you driving traffic to your website? Do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested Creating a video for your homepage today. TrustleMedia.com. Fill out the form at TrustleMedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. All right, we're back with our top three vehicles that we've owned. Troy, start it off. Number three, we called it the tank. It was a 1984 Oldsmobile Delta 88 four-door I had 11 people in this car at one time. That's a lot. So my grandfather bought it brand new. And then he passed it on to his wife at one point. And then my mom drove it. Then my sister drove it. And then I got it. Heck, my dad might even. What color was it? it for green. Green. Mean green. The tank. We had a bunch of names for it. But. It took a licking, kept on ticking. I backed into a pole one time and dented in the uh, back bumper. Yeah. I just went back there, popped it right back out, <laughs> kept on going. So what, uh, you probably don't know, but what is the difference between um, an old, what year was that? 84. 84. <clears throat> so what's the difference between that and the Cutlass Sierra? The Cutlass was two-door. Yeah, Cutlass was a coupe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all the all of them. I'm pretty sure all the Cutlasses were two door, and the Delta eighty eight. Those were the four. Well, because there was one that came up on a Craigslist because we're we're looking for our oldest daughter, and uh, it had seventy five thousand original miles, and it had that old, um, almost kind of the Brome. You remember the Brome editions? Um, But they had the really plush seats really nice i mean it was like you're sitting on a couch in your living room you yeah. know um and they only wanted like four thousand dollars for it and i was out of town and i sent the picture to my wife and by the time i she goes yeah that looks like a, that's in the price range and it's a good deal it was already gone so yeah buddy that's it <clears throat> so Wait, i was driving i have some Del- two-door delta 88s i don't know if they're all this is cut cutlasses i'm not i'm not kidding when i tell you this when i when i finally got it um, I watched the, the mileage ticker go over a million. It was nine, 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 nine. And back then it was just the little dials, you know, they clicked over to a million. Are you sure? It probably clicked over to a hundred thousand, but yeah, it's probably a hundred thousand. I'm not uh, a million is a lot. It, it was a million. No way. Unless I dreamed it, but it's very vivid in my mind. When did you get it? Um, 93 or 94. So in 10 years, they drove that 100,000 miles every year? I guess. No. There's no way. No. I drive no. a lot. A lot. Maybe he didn't get it new. Maybe it's already. No, nah, it, just, it just had, it wasn't a 100,000 mile counter. You see what I'm saying? Counter might have been different. Yeah, the counter had one less digit, so you re rolled over a hundred thousand miles. Maybe. So it may have had two, two hundred, which three hundred thousand miles. Line up like ten thousand miles a year is is normal. That may so it true. wasn't a million miles. Nice try, Troy. You're not getting good. that sponsorship from Oldsmobile. Because I also know <laughs> GM doesn't make anything good enough to go a million miles. So yeah, that's we'll, true. We'll yeah. add to that. All right, but you were in it when it rolled over. When I was it, in when it, when it zeroed it, out. When it zeroed out, yeah. rolled over, whatever it was, it was pretty cool because I'm we watched it. <laughs> did you uh you took your phone out and didn't, videoed it while it was happening? Put did, it on YouTube. Didn't have phone back then. <laughs> uh, lived in much simpler times back then. Uh, number two is Suzu truck. Had a little two door, two th- well three seater, but 
two white. seater. Was it white? White, yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing that truck. Yep. Got some stories behind that bad boy. Um, and then number one, a nineteen ninety eight Mitsubishi Eclipse. I got this car, so I really wanted a Dodge Ram, right? And my dad, my senior year of high school, or I don't know when we made the bet, but my dad and I made a bet. He was like, if you can get straight A's, sure, I'll buy you a brand new car, whatever you want. <laughs> Dude, he knew. He had the high ground. Yeah, he did. Yeah. But I said, okay, any year of my high school career, and like I said, I don't remember when we made the bet, but he's like, yes, if you make straight A's, I will uh, buy you a brand new car. Yeah. It's like, give me one B. He was like, all right, you got it. So my senior year, uh, one semester, I can't remember which one, I got all A's and one B. They wasn't for the whole year? He just went one semester? I, well, they still had the high ground. Yeah, that whole year. Yeah. I, I think it was that whole year. Did you tell your teachers, hey, I got a car riding on this? No. I, I wasn't friends yeah. much with my teachers. But the one B I made was in advanced math, and that was the hardest class I've probably ever taken. Yeah. Other than physics. Physics was really hard. And then, so then you're like, I'm getting a Dodge, and he didn't do it? Yeah, well, when he knew I was getting close, there were some amendments made to, yeah. <laughs> to the bet. So uh, I was able to get a car, a car of my choice, and that's what I chose. So yeah, Dodge Ram was a little too high. Ask him, ask him what happened to that Mitsubishi Eclipse. Yeah, it yep. got Bur- burned up. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, uh, five years later, yeah, about five or six years later, a tree, like, fell on it and centered it. Like, tacoed that thing. Yeah, when they took the tree off of it, it looked like a hot dog bun or taco shell. Yeah. And, yeah. But luckily, nobody was hurt in that storm. That tree could have fallen on our house and killed us all because it was right there. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Wild stuff. All right, Matt. What are your top three? Number three, 1983 F100. That was my very first drivable vehicle. I drove that to school, football games, all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Just no, you know, two doors, no crew cab, nothing like that. Just a bench seat across the front. Bench seat across the front. Big old yep. drop it in gear. Yep, had some, you know, had some bigger tires, like mud tires on it that, yeah. you know, that came with it for, you know, whatever reason. And my dad didn't drive a whole lot because it was a hand-me-down. Yeah. And uh, that was a fun, that was a fun truck. What color was it? Brown and, and uh, tan. Yeah. Like with the with the metal, uh, the metal, uh, you know, that trim piece that did, separated the colors? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know exactly no, well, yeah, so... Metal, metal, with the tan, dark brown, dark brown up top. Oh, okay, yeah. Two tone, yeah. It was a good looking truck, and we always had. And my dad always had, you know, was having problems with it and stuff like that. And I ended up having some problems with it, and you know, it ended up. I still had it, and it ended up in an alley, and then the city eventually just towed it away because <laughs> it was in the alley for Thank so long. Thank you, Thank you, city, for removing that problem. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, I didn't have to pay to have it hauled off. Uh, number two, 2019 F350, the truck that I have now. It's by far the the favorite truck that I've uh, ever owned. I I had a 2016 F350. I don't know. This one is just, it's got everything I want, some stuff that I don't really necessarily want, like yeah. the sunroof and stuff like that. I don't really want all that, but... Um, don't ever use it. Um, but that thing pulls, the engine's great. Have had relatively no issues with it until today with the, uh, thing, but then it fixed itself. So I don't know if it was just a yeah. glitch in the matrix of that thing or what, but it's been a good truck. And then number one, we've already talked about it. 1964 Lincoln Continental. That was my dream car. Always wanted one for some reason. I wasn't really into the hot rods and racing and stuff like that. I like uh, cruising and luxury and, 
All right. That all was right, all right. It's like you're riding on a cloud. <laughs> it really, it really is. And that thing is so stinking comfortable. A lot of room, you know, and they for 1964. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. The the power seats, power windows, power locks. Well, not necessarily power locks. They're vacuum controlled, but yeah. I mean, cruise control on a 1964, and it's a little dial. It has 55, 65, 70, and you dial it, and then you set it, and it's crazy, what, you know, just how advanced it was for yeah. 64, and if, you know, you've seen any of those, uh, which mine's not a convertible, but if you've seen the gears and everything that they had to make that convertible top be automatic, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, you know? and this has suicide doors, right, the yeah. back doors? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So eventually, once I get it restored, my, my goal was to get that thing restored for, uh, uh, prom for Lily's senior year, so I've got a year to get it at least rolling. Yeah, so you're from like right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she's get on it. Junior prom's coming up, so that's why I'm getting on it. That's yeah. why I got all the. She doesn't appreciate all that right now, but hey, maybe sea she foam man, put some sea foam in there. I actually, thing. based on your recommendation, I did buy that. Yeah, and once I get it running, I'm going to do that treatment just to see if it'll bring those rings and all that kind of stuff back to life a little yeah. bit and let me run it before it'll blow some smoke. When you put it in, it's already the, blowing uh, smoke. So, oh, it'll 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 do even worse than that. Oh man. no, it's blowing smoke. I'm just telling you, it's good. I'm, I'm telling you, it's it blowing little. smoke. Okay. All right, number That's three, a 2004 Ford F-150 had the 5.4 liter Triton extended cab in blue jean, and I, I bought that one. I don't recommend for people to buy brand new vehicles right off the lot, but at the time I had a, I worked for a company that got a pretty steep discount off of uh, Ford. Well, most all vehicles we supplied all the major manufacturers. So I got a pretty sweet deal, uh, on that, on that ride, um, had the long bed, not, uh, which was nice. I haven't had a long bed since then. Um, but we didn't have a garage or anything, just a carport. So it didn't matter how long it was, it would fit. Um, good truck my first uh first new vehicle and so one of those where i was the only one to put miles on it pretty sweet deal number two a 1989 mazda b2200 extended cab had a custom gray paint job really dark tinted windows uh custom wheels it was pretty sweet uh, i traded for it um i was driving a nissan at the time and my that's the one of the first truck I bought. And then my dad was really, you know, had a Jones for the Nissan and I really liked the Mazda that he was driving. And we just decided one day to just even swap that. Did the old yeah. switcheroo. Did the did the swap. So but it, I spent that was the one I drove back and forth to college basically is that Mazda and um really enjoyed it. It was a good good truck. Spent a lot of time with it. The worst time I ever had with that, the worst uh it was the alternator that I was replacing in that and in a dorm room parking lot without a jack. It was, it was a disaster and I could get halfway under there and I was doing work like behind my head and I pulled the, pulled the old one out, took it up to auto zone, you know, chain traded it in for the core, got a new one, went back and I'm trying to thread it through. And it's so much where you just can't even pick up your arms anymore. Cause and I just couldn't get the third bolt to bite. Just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Getting frustrated. You all know that where it's just you should just go to bed because you're so mad and nothing <laughs> works and and uh I was so mad and I just I never could get that third bolt to bite. And finally I took that thing and looked at it and I'm like, Well, this this one has threads, this one has threads, and this one has no threads. And then I was like, Well, this should the bolt just pass you know, so I took it back up to AutoZone and I told them to bring the core back out. And sure enough, they didn't thread that hole. Um from the factory so they went back found another one and brought it out and it, it had threads in it so i was able to go back in and it went in right away but i had spent <laughs> like two hours like just trying to get it you know all the frustration mm -hmm. i remember i remember doing that i've done one alternator change and that was on a uh i can't even remember what year it was it might have been a 2004 2005 yeah. um, ford contour and that was a pretty slick vehicle too but because it was five speed you know fun to drive but uh i did the alternator on that was the first time because i was in college and i was on my own i was like yeah. oh, you know like trial by fire i was like i have no idea what i'm doing right. but it looks pretty simple to me so yeah it's unplug this thing and there's some bolts yeah. there yeah and then well getting the belt 
yep. back on just right and everything. But yeah, it was it was kind of fun. That was a, my major accomplishment when I was in college on car repair was that alternator. I was like, man, I've I'm like a mechanic now, you know. <laughs> I wasn't. I'm still not. Well, we'll leave the grease in under my fingernails so everybody knows I've been doing man's work. I still got some. Look right yeah. there. Good for you. <laughs> All right, my number one, uh, 2013 Ford F-150. You got the five liter V8, four by four quad cab. Love it. That's the truck my son's driving right now. That's the truck that's giving me all the pain in the neck right now with the noise coming out of the back end. But uh, that's another one, you know, through my sweet deal that I used to have. Um, got that one brand new in 2013 and put every mile on that. We're up to 100 and 170, I think, 170,000 miles on it now. Good night. But, uh, yeah, you just get in that thing and it, you know, feels like home. Mine's a 2019, and I've got 115,000 miles on it already. Yeah. You drive a lot, man. man. Well, we rode that. We we burned up to Montana and back. Probably going to cross a million soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting ready to roll over again. Just keep watching that dial and see what happens. <laughs> But uh, so honorable mention would be the 2018 that I'm driving right now. Um, Jury's still out. No, I'm a fan. But I, it's it it was like when I got in that truck to work on it. You know, it's it just feels different. I've been I've been been in that seat a long time. So mm -hmm. like, oh, it's got a special place right now. And hopefully, my 2018 will get to that point. It will a lot quicker if this. Uh, we'll revisit on how much this this uh, this breakdown cost me. We'll revisit in 2028. And just see if it's uh, everything that you thought it would be. If it lasts if 10 years from now, mm -hmm. we will see. And you're giving it to one of your grandkids. No, I'm not giving grandkids <laughs> vehicles. I'm not going to do it. All, All right. right. Good top three. Troy, what do you got? Yeah, so just been uh, reflecting. So this is the good word right here. Resurrection. So hey. Maybe, since it was just Easter, um, Resurrection Sunday, we uh, we had a good day. Um, so our pastor preached out of 1 Corinthians 15 when Paul is making his uh, point or argument that, that Christ did resurrect. And in Corinthians, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's turmoil. There's, you know, believers having doubts all kinds of things going on. And uh, he's talking to believers when he wrote this uh, letter to them. Um, and just over the week, been reflecting on some things that our pastor touched on that that I know I've thought about before, just was put in a different light, so it was good to hear and good to, good to think about. Um, one of them being that uh, as he's writing this letter, Paul is bringing up different people's names. So he's talking about Cephas. He's talking about the 500 people that that Christ um, showed himself to after he rose from the dead. And basically, the reason Paul is naming these people is this was two years after the resurrection. And so he's saying, hey, if you don't believe me, you can go ask these people if, if you know, what I'm saying is true and if ask their account. They saw him too, so you can go talk to them about uh, Jesus and his if he really did become alive. Yeah, because the Sanhedrin at the time was was trying to discredit Christ's resurrection, saying his body was stolen, whatever else. And um, yeah, he's like listing people that were alive and saw him. Hey, go, go, go talk to them. They were there. They're witnesses. Yeah, if you don't believe me? Go ask more people. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, and then the next thing that he touched on was uh, the pity that believers today should, or we should have pity on, or others, sorry, other people should have pity on us if Christ did not resurrect from the dead. He talks about, um, you know, we are even found to be misre misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. So if the dead are not raised, then we're doing all this work on, on earth, believing that he did was raised and not really having 
the best life that we could. We, you know, being persecuted because back then believers were be, still being persecuted and everything, and they should be pitied if they believe this and it really didn't happen. They should be pitied. But then he goes on and says in verse twenty, uh, but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fr- fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as man came. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the, of the dead. So as in Adam, all of us will die, and so also in Christ, all of us will be made alive. And so that's good word. That's good news. That is our hope. The whole Christian faith is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ, because if he did not resurrect himself from the dead as God, then... <laughs> We're not resurrecting ourselves, so there's no hope if he didn't resurrect himself. He conquered death through his through his resurrection. Right. So I've just been reflecting on that, and yeah, the hope that we have in Christ is that he raised himself from the dead. If we believe that happened, then we will be raised again with him. So, so the the question about the resurrection of people that that have doubts you know, about the resurrection or whatever, I would pose this. Peter and Paul were both beheaded. Andrew is said to have been crucified. Um, uh, Peter was hung upside down, crucified. Peter was hung upside down. Not uh, beheaded. Paul was beheaded. Though, yeah. uh, Philip was put to death. Matthew was stabbed in Ethiopia. Um, and then there was one of them, I can't remember who was, who was dragged by horse. And then there was, uh, another person who no, there wasn't, was stoned. Yeah. And well, John. beheaded. And then the, the, the soldier that led him up was, was so convicted by his words that he, he was beheaded as well as a Christian next to him. I can't remember which one that was, but at any point in time, they were all given basically a chance to renounce their faith. So that tells me they saw if they were if they were part of some hoax they they yeah it would have been oh they they wouldn't have they wouldn't have taken it all, gone the, all way. the way yeah because they had every opportunity to and I'm sure they had some doubts on day 2 after yeah. the crucifixion I'm sure there's a, oh man well, well I doubting Thomas Thomas said yeah. show me your scars he and, didn't believe it when he saw him well he did he finally showed me show me your it. yeah you know but to me I mean that's just Proof enough, yeah. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> in addition to the hundreds of people that Jesus showed up and visited after he was resurrected. Right, I mean, so they're the... To which Paul's saying, eh, don't, if you don't believe me, go talk to them. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, so. Yeah, and I heard some other interesting things in the sermon about um, just the way the, cl- the linens were folded in the tomb. Uh, so if, if, if his followers would have gone in there and stolen the body to say he was resurrected. They would have left him wrapped up. They wouldn't have, you know, unwrapped him and carried a, a naked corpse around. Right. And then if other, you know, if, uh, you know, soldiers or whatever would have taken him, they probably would have just left the garments there without having neatly folded them. Yeah. And if for some reason Jesus didn't really die, he would have had to rip himself out of the linens, you know, if he could have gone through yeah. all of that. So, and that that's another that that is a theory, right? He was just uh, yeah. he passed out. That's a and horrible. He, he came to ridiculous. Theory, the Romans in my opinion, were pretty but, good at killing people. Yeah, like yeah, they they, they, were. they had that down. They, they were pros. Yeah, by yeah. that time. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, so yeah, good word, resurrection. All right. Appreciate you joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.